Hi guys, Jurassic Junkie here, and today it's going to be a bit more laid back. Welcome to Friday Night Run. So hello everyone on the internet. Have you had a good time since we spoke last week? This is the second Friday night rant in a row, so I'm doing well. But I just want to point out, today is Thursday, because I've got a very busy day tomorrow, so I wanted to pre-record this, so fingers crossed some breaking news doesn't happen in between here and now. But also I just want to say, as you can see there, I've got the tripod in the background, I just filmed the Friday night rant, and then I kind of watched it back and I went, Oh, that was incredibly wooden, it was horrible. Um, mainly because what I want to talk about now is lots of information, so there's not loads of room for input. And um, I just wanted to film it again, so I'm going to sit back this time. I've got myself a glass of a uh, few ice cubes and my beloved Jack Daniels. So now that I sound like Julian from Trailer Park Boys, we can continue. Also, I should probably put the mic closer to me. So yes, all over the shop. There's a few things I want to talk about, Nintendo H1Z1, there's a few different things, but the only problem is Microsoft did their conference yesterday, well, as I said, it's Thursday, but for you it is Friday, so two days ago they did the conference, and there was lots of information to come out, and that's what I want to talk about, really. So if there's enough room at the end, I'll talk about the others. So then, it was Windows 10 conference, so not actually an Xbox One conference, but one for Windows 10. But from that conference was lots of good gaming information. So the first thing then we'll dive in is DirectX 12. So DirectX 12 is the latest installment of the DirectX series. And even though it's not to the point where it's completed just yet, they've shown us a few uh, ideas of how it works. So the first thing was, there was a video on screen, one with DirectX 11, one with 12, and both of them just randomly generating buildings. Up until the point they actually broke DirectX 11, the frames dropped down to zero and the whole thing just stood still, but DirectX 12 just carried on powering through the thing. So as you would expect, DirectX 12 is more powerful. They also threw a few different stats at us. So for instance, we could be looking at around about 50% extra performance out of DirectX 12, which I think is great. So when that does hit Xbox One, it means we should be able to get power performance out of it as well. But the other thing is it actually affects not just the Xbox One and not just Windows, but also mobile gaming. Now, mobile gaming is getting better on tablets and mobiles. We are seeing better graphics, higher performance, but most of the time that is the cost of the battery. Now, as I said, with DirectX 12, so we're not talking about getting a particular game and making it super better with all these extra features. We're talking about if you just had a normal game, which was on DirectX 11, if that was being run on DirectX 12, you'd actually find out they would only use half the power that DirectX 11 did, which is brilliant. So that means the pre-existing games, if moved over to DirectX 12, would be able to give you twice as long fun while you're sat in the toilet with your mobile. So all around, DirectX 12 is looking pretty powerful. They're already talking about which engines are utilizing it. So there's the Unreal Engine that's got it so far, and also Unity, which I think is a great thing because Unity... Personally, I'm a big fan because it's a free engine for game developers to use. At the same time, it's an engine that's being utilised a lot on mobile and tablets and also on the Xbox One. So it's great to see Unity having the support of DirectX 12 there. So yes, that was a bit of a boring bit. Now let's speed things up. So what they're saying is when you get your Windows 10, you'll notice there's the actual the Xbox button. Now we've got that pretty much now on Windows 8. It is what we call Smart Glass. And again, Smart Glass is for mobile and tablet. Now, Smart Glass is pretty cool. You get to see what your friends are doing. If they record a DVR clip, you can watch it on your tablet. And also, you can message them and do different things. One thing you can't do on it, and you can't even do it on the Xbox One, is voice chat your friends. So, for instance, just do a quick 30-second recording, which I found incredibly annoying because I use that feature all the time, especially because it takes a bit of time to write a message like, just having my dinner, I'll be on in half hour. But it's so much easier to simply say it. Now, I used to do that all the time on the 360, or if my friend was offline, I used to always leave him stupid messages, and then when I would return online, I'll get a stupid message back. And I just like the idea of just doing quick 30-second voice recordings. So it looks like that feature is coming back to the Xbox One, but also it's now going to be built into Windows 10. So if my friend leaves me a message back in the 360 days, I could see it on Xbox.com on PC, but it would simply say, you need to play this on a console to hear it. But it now means you'll be able to not only listen to it on the PC, but you'll be able to record it and reply from the PC as well. So yes, so far not that interesting, but we're getting warmer. So the next thing which I find incredibly useful for PC gamers is that they're now bringing the game DVR over. Now a lot of people say straight away, well game DVRs is a very new thing to consoles, but it's been here a long time on PC, and yes it has. But with PC, if you're playing a game, you need to have a third party app, such as Fraps running in the background, 
And the problem is when I used to record videos like Days, I used to have to have fraps running for about well, the full length of the game, which could be up to about three hours. So I'd sit there, play for three hours, record three hours worth, and probably get about 20 minutes worth of content to make an actual episode. But that did mean I'd have to sit there through the three hours again and pick out the good pieces. The reason I've liked it on console more than I have actually on PC is when I'm actually playing a game, I don't need to worry about recording it all. I will just play it and if something good happens, I will then say record and it will get the last 30 seconds or so or up to five minutes, depends on how you want to set it. But the point is, it was always recorded in the background, and I just kind of say, that's the bit I want. Now, I know on PC, there may be some extra third-party software that kind of does that already. But the point is, Windows is now bringing it in to the operating system, and it will be there from the get-go. So on a video that's shown them actually playing Steam, they fired up a Steam game, was playing it, and then once they did something, they pressed the Windows key and G, and it instantly recorded the last 30 seconds of the game and uploaded it to the Xbox ecosystem. So this was a PC game and from there he was able to record and chuck it onto the friend stream which then if somebody was on the Xbox would be able to see, comment and like. So I think this is brilliant because personally I don't do a massive amount of PC gaming and I've told you why that in the past but the point is when I am, if something funny happens, I haven't got to worry that oh I didn't have fraps running, I can press Windows and G and don't worry about it, it recorded whatever happened. So as we can see Windows and the Xbox ecosystem is starting to become closer together. So next we got to see was Fable Legends. Now this is a game coming to the Xbox One, but they announced that it's also coming to Xbox 10. And by Xbox 10, I mean Windows 10. This whiskey is good. So yes, it's coming to both PC and to the Xbox. But the interesting part was, not only could you use the new kind of smart glass that they've got going to be able to see, oh look, my friend's playing it on the Xbox. If you're on PC, you can click on the friend who's playing it on Xbox and join their session. So at last we have cross-platform play. So you no longer do you have to own an Xbox if you're just a PC user through through, but you buy Fable Legends, you can play with your friends on Xbox One, which I think is a brilliant system. This is something I've been wanting years and years now because there is a few of my friends that are all just PC players and for them to be able to play with us, talk to us and actually be in the same world as us is brilliant because they don't have to go out and buy an extra piece of hardware. So at the moment they just said this works for Fable, but fingers crossed we're going to see uh, hopefully a catalogue of games that are coming to both the Xbox and PC so we can cross-play. Apart from I will never cross-play somebody on PC on an FPS if they have a mouse plugged in because that is just a landslide. There is no way you're going to beat somebody on mouse. So yes, so it looks like the ecosystem is getting closer. You can now play both on PC and Xbox, but the problem is we do have some Xbox One games that look like they're going to be staying as exclusive, such as Halo. But that doesn't mean you can't play them on your PC now. So the next thing they announced is when you're on Windows 10, you have access to all your Xbox One games. So anything that's installed on the Xbox One can be streamed instantly to anything running Windows 10, so a PC or a tablet. So on this video, they're showing them playing Forza, or as the Americans like to say, Forza. So yes, they were playing Forza, so this was a PC streaming from an Xbox, which is a system which I personally won't use very often because if I want to sit there and play on my Xbox, I will actually do it downstairs. But at the same time, it is a nice feature because if I'm up here programming and working and my friends quickly jump onto Battlefield, it'd be quite nice to go, well, I'll tell you what, I can only spare 15 minutes, so let me fire it up through the PC, stream it straight down to the Xbox, and I'll play from my desk for 15 minutes and jump back out again. So I will use it, but not as many as some people. And then the last thing on top of Windows 10, as well as all the Windows 10 information, I've just hit the line, <laughs> but there's obviously said lots of Windows 10 information, which personally I didn't really look too much at because it was a very long conference. I think about four hours or so, and at the end of the day, I'll get Windows 10 anyway. So I'll find out what them features are in the long run. But the best thing they said is the upgrade from previous version of Windows to Windows 10 is going to be at the price of free, which is brilliant because Windows is normally a very expensive operating system. But they said if you do the upgrade within the first year, so it's an incentive to get everybody onto Windows 10, it will be completely free. So just to recap then, we're going to be seeing DirectX 12 come very soon, which hopefully will give a nice performance boost for the Xbox One. It's also going to be giving longevity in batteries and also make way better graphics on 
smartphones and tablets. PC is now coming that much closer to the Xbox, so we can now talk to our friends on Xbox, we can send messages, we can steal games from our Xbox, but also buy them on the PC and play against our Xbox friends. And I think I said that wrong, but I don't know how I did. Windows users now have the beautiful Xbox One DVR where you can just press Windows, G, boom, whatever you just did. You did a beautiful headshot, but crap, you wasn't recording it. Doesn't matter now, it saved the last 30 seconds. And all of this is going to be free. Also, the other one thing I wanted to say is it looks like the uh, applications that come with Windows 10 may be easily ported across over to Windows. So there has been rumours that they want to see both mobile, PC and Xbox One marketplace kind of become one ecosystem. And it looks like that is a step closer. They've said that it's much easier now if somebody makes an application for Windows 10 to port it over to the TV. So this is great, so hopefully over the next few months we'll be able to see a massive boom of applications actually on the Xbox One. So, the next thing they came out with is something quite interesting. So as we know, the big thing at the moment is virtual reality headsets. We've got Oculus Rift around the corner. Sony's also doing theirs, Project Morpheus. And there was rumours that Microsoft's going to be doing it, and we've also seen some like concept art notepad scratchers from many, many years ago, and that was the rumour to be coming. So it's a rumour no more, they've decided to announce it is coming and it is by the name of HoloLens. Now HoloLens looks very interesting because it's not actually a virtual reality headset. So as I said with Morpheus and the Oculus Rift, the idea is you'll be getting a screen which will blind you from the real world and bring the gaming world into you. So you'll have screens smack in front of you, you obviously can't see through them. Well, HoloLens works completely different. It'll actually be a kind of glass screen and it'll project the things onto the screen itself. So you'll still be able to see your real world, but it will know where the tables are, where the wall is, where everything is, and project different things onto it. So it's like Google Glass bought on crack. Whereas Google Glass was a very small kind of basic information in your corner, this looks to be a lot more colorful completely all the way across the screen and is completely aware of where you are and maps the projections as you move. Now when they announced this, this is actually aimed more at Windows 10 they didn't really talk about it coming to the Xbox. But the point is they've shown you a few demos and these demos as I say you've got to take them with a pinch of salt because they might not actually be real world applications but at the same time they did say to anybody who went to the conference you'll be able to get your hands on it and play with them so I don't know if these are just tech demos or something a bit more completed so hopefully over the next few days we'll be able to get some more information on this. But they did show a few things such as somebody walking around a room and they could actually project a Skype call as they was talking. Now that's very basic because it would just sit wherever you want to put it. But then they started to get more technical. So there's a guy walked into his living room, it knew where the fridge was, where the table was, and then it kind of put his calendar on the table for him, projected buttons onto his fridge that he could activate to bring up different applications. And there was a wall which was completely blank and then it built a TV for him. And then from there he decided he wanted his TV a bit bigger, he pinched it and stretched it and then they had a bigger TV. <clears throat> Another one they kind of showed was somebody sat trying to fix a leaky U-bend and at the same time they had a plumber who was watching it from her eyes giving her advice and he could write on the screen and point this is the thing you need to tighten and this you need to disconnect. So for the real world scenarios that's probably not going to work for me and you but I think this could be a very clever thing that could be used for maybe military or different scenarios where they need to send somebody in there but they need to have a technical person that couldn't be there and they could see through the eyes of this person and give them advice. So again you've got to kind of take it with a pinch of salt of what they're trying to aim it at. But then they went into a much bigger idea saying it is for everybody saying you can create different things such as somebody was working on a motorbike but he didn't put the shell on it so they kind of superimposed the shell and he could see and then manipulate it and change it. So they're trying to say the next leap forwards is actual holograms and not necessarily just something in front of your face. Now, as we'd expect, if this is successful, and this all depends on the support really, because if nobody supports it, nobody makes applications for it, and it's left for Microsoft to do it themselves, then this thing will be dead in the water. But if there's a massive boom and everyone's like, yes, this is the next big thing, then it will be very successful. And as we could expect, there is ideas that you could use it for gaming. So there's very likely this will be coming over to the Xbox One. So we've got a slight taste of what a game could look like on this because it's shown as Minecraft. 
Now normally in Minecraft you expect to look through the eyes of Steve and also have a pickaxe in your hand, but instead this more felt like Lego. So for instance, it knew where his table was and it kind of projected his house and he could look around it and then it would put a castle on the settee and a stream across his carpet and then from there he could manipulate the blocks. Now this doesn't mean this is exactly where Minecraft is going. This is probably just a tech demo to say this is what we could do. But the thing is, I definitely see there could be potentials for this in gaming. Now at the end of the day, you could sit there and enjoy your television and that's how you want to play your battlefield. But it could add as a extra hood. You could have extra information around the side of you. So it could just go down to the sides. So I don't know. It all depends how game developers actually want to utilize this. But more than likely, we're going to see more information on HoloLens when it comes down to an Xbox conference. So yes, that's pretty much it. I don't know what to think of the HoloLens. I don't know if it's, I was excited when I saw it and I do want to put that thing on my head and just go, how awesome is this? But at the same time, I don't know how well Project Morpheus is going to be, but I do also want to put that on my head. So very interesting times. Aside from HoloLens, everything they announced is amazing. and It's really gotten a step forward to making PC gamers and Xbox gamers unite. It also means that they'll be able to utilize some of the Xbox One games. Obviously, you need to have an Xbox One in the first place. But at the same time, if you don't want to purchase one and there is a game on both the platforms, we can now play against each other. And we have a potential VR, well, not VR, a holographic gaming headset down the line. So they've said they've been working on this for several years now. I think the dev kits are coming out quite soon. But I am interested to see where this could take gaming. But again, this could be a gimmick, but it all falls down to the support. We saw, I do love the new version of the Kinect, the Xbox One Kinect, especially for voice commands more than anything. But the original Kinect kind of fell straight on its face. There wasn't much support. And if there isn't support, it kind of dies. So again, this all falls to, is there going to be support in the gaming realm for HoloLens? So I'm going to love you and leave you there. 22 minutes on this and I've already talked about Microsoft. And as I said, there was some H1Z1 stuff I want to talk about. But if I do, I'm going to have a beast to edit and I don't like editing at the best of times. So I'm going to love you and leave you and just leave you with the question of the week is HoloLens. What do you think? Is it a gimmick? Is it too soon to say? Or are you excited but at the same time going, it could be a failure? You don't know. Personally, very excited. Don't know what its future is going to be, but I just want to see more of it. So I'm going to toddle off them, carry on chewing this ice cube, get this edited down, and then I'm going to play some Shadow of Mordor because I just, oh, just chopping things and, oh, I'm not even going to go into it. It'll also be another five minutes to edit down anyway. So, yes, very good game. Going to love you, leave you. And as always, thank you very much for watching, guys. Cheers. Bye.